All right, so it's December 24th, and what better Pokemon to do a solo playthrough with than Delibird? It's basically the Santa Pokemon, so the present I'm giving you today is this video, and the present it's giving me is its Gen 3 move pool, which is probably the smallest one I have ever seen. It starts with present, and then it learns no new moves through level up, through TMs and HMs, it gets access to Focus Punch, Water Pulse, Toxic Hail, Hidden Power, Ice Beam, Blizzard, Protect, Rain Dance, Frustration. I feel like that's going to be the theme of this run. Return, Double Team, Aerial Ace, Facade, Secret Power, Rest, Attract, Thief, and Fly. That is the first time that I have ever read all of the moves that the Pokemon can learn. It's really nice that it gets access to same type attack bonus moves for both of its types. However, they're going to come late in the playthrough. Ice Beam and Fly both after the 5th gym, and then Aerial Ace after the 6th gym. And now that we're talking about gyms, let's just reflect on the fact that the first gym leader in all of Hoenn is Roxanne, the rock type specialist, and Delibird is an ice flying type, so rock moves do 4 times damage to it. Plus, Present is a normal type move, so rock Pokemon resist it. I think that this is going to be a very slow and painful start. However, maybe it has something going for it in terms of its stats. It has 65 HP. Oh, and its lowest stat is 50 in its attack stat. So yeah, present is a normal type move, which is a physical move. So I got to use my worst stat for the longest time, I guess. It has 70 defense, 65 speed, 95 special attack, which is going to be really nice once I start using ice moves, and 80 special defense. My rules for this playthrough are that I can only use my starter in battle, no items in battle except held items, no glitches or exploits, and no TM32, which is double team until level 100. Now in all of my videos, I allow myself to manipulate my starter so that the comparisons at the end of the video between multiple Pokemon are all fair. What this means is that I can choose the type of my hidden power, I can set my nature, and I can also choose my ability. Which leads me to a bit of a conundrum. I have a choice between Hustle and Vital Spirit. Hustle increases the user's attack stat by 50%, but lowers the accuracy of the user's physical moves by 20%. Special moves and status moves are unaffected by this ability. So that really doesn't seem like a good option, because Present, the only move that I have access to uh, until quite late into the game, only has 90% accuracy. So if Hustle reduces its accuracy by 20%, it's only going to have 70% accuracy, which is the same as a move like Blizzard. I personally think that that's just an unacceptable trade-off to make this early on in the game, so I'm going to have to go with Vital Spirit. This ability prevents Pokemon from being afflicted by sleep and yawn. Also, it causes rest to fail. So, remember Delibird's move pool, which is very limited? Yeah, it just lost one of its moves because I have to use Vital Spirit. Now, luckily for me, I think that its nature is a lot easier to pick. Today, I'll be using a Rash Nature, which raises its special attack and lowers its special defense. I really don't want to lower my physical defense just because Roxanne and then later on Steven. And Delibird needs the most help it can get, so I think by raising its special attack stat, which is already its highest stat, it's going to make Ice Beam hit just that much harder later on in the game. With all that out of the way, let's talk about the move Present. By the way, before Iron Bundle was introduced, Delibird was the only Pokemon that could learn this move. So here's how it works. Present can either deal damage to the target or heal the target. So if Present deals damage, it actually has a variable base power. It has a 40% chance to be a 40 base power move, a 30% chance to be an 80 base power move, and only a 10% chance to be a 120 base power move. However, it also has a 20% chance to heal the target by a uh, one quarter, so yeah. It's going to be kind of painful using this thing. Of course, I mentioned this before, but Present only has a 90% accuracy, and it also only has 15 PP. So this move is terribly inconsistent. As a result, I think the best strategy is just to deplete Present's PP and use Struggle instead. In Generation 3, this move utilizes the attack stat, it does typeless damage, and it has a power of 50. So overall, it's just a little bit better than Present's worst damage, but it is much more consistent because it has 100% accuracy, and it also can't heal the opponent. I really just can't believe that Present heals the opponent. It's so strange. Now in the early game, I decide to face all of the optional trainers, as well as knocking out all wild Pokemon that I come across. And that's because I need to do the best I can to prepare for Roxanne. When I first arrive at her, Delibird is level 16, so let's see how this goes. 
She leads with Geodude. I'm using Struggle here because it's typeless. It does, uh, about a quarter. Okay, at least Rock Tomb missed. I take the Geodude down to half health, and then this time it hits Rock Tomb, and yeah, okay, so... That knocked me out in one hit. I backtrack and fight this guy with some magic harps to get a little bit more experience. And with him out of the way, I now have to train in the wild. One nice thing is that Delibird has a fast growth rate, so at least I'm gonna be gaining levels at a decent pace. Let's be fair though, uh, I don't know what level I'm gonna need to defeat Roxanne. I guess the next one that makes the most sense to try is level 20. Like there's no way I'm gonna do it at level 18, but maybe over two damage rounding thresholds, I'll be doing enough damage to knock at least the Geodudes out. Now that I think about it, even level 20 seems too low. Still, I will try at that level just in case. So one thing about the early game is the fact that I want to really conserve my healing items. After all, if I want to use Struggle later on to defeat Roxanne, I'm going to need to be able to heal before I go into that battle. So in this case, when I'm training in the wild, I actually am going to go back to the Pokemon Center over and over and heal so that I can use Present to knock the opponents out. That way I don't have to waste any of my potions here and I can save them for before Roxanne. At level 20, I try to take her on again. I accidentally healed here, so I'm using Present. It does like almost no damage and then Rock Tomb takes me to orange in one hit, so... Yeah, there's going to be no way to defeat her at this level. I definitely just need to keep leveling up. And here's a small advantage that Pokemon who have to train for Roxanne, especially in this grass, have. Abra can show up here, and if I catch one, then I can use Teleport to save a little bit of time. Specifically, I can teleport back to the Pokemon Center every time I have to heal, and I can skip some backtracking by using this ability later on. Granted, I actually have to catch an Abra for this to work. I'm sure I'll get one eventually though, because uh, Delibird is going to be here for quite some time. By the way, when I ran out of PP, I did head back and attempt Roxanne again at level 20, seeing if struggle would be enough and no struggle is not going to be enough while i'm training i finally catch myself an abra so this is perfect because now once delibird gets to low health i can use it to teleport back to the pokemon center saving myself a little bit of walking time i'm just taking all the small victories that i can get right now because uh yeah this is this is taking a while it's going to be more than half an hour before i beat my first gym leader right now it might be fun for everyone to make a comment and predict what level i'm going to need to defeat roxanne with how things are going to this point i'm thinking something like level 30 but i will try before that just in case however i think level 23 is too low so let's try her again at level 25. now struggle is doing about half to the geodude it hits with rock throw which doesn't do half to deli bird and then i knock it out okay so i actually got by her first pokemon that is the first time that i did it i heal with an orenberry and then i go for struggle again rock tomb hits taking deli bird down to 16 hit points and then i knock out her second geodude okay so i actually made it to the nose pass the problem is I don't have enough health to knock this thing out with struggle, and that's even if I could survive one of its hits. So that's my fourth reset. So I'll face her at the next damage rounding threshold. If you don't know what damage rounding is by this point, you should really go back and watch a lot of the other videos that I've released in December. I have explained this mechanic so many times. So now the Daily Bird is level 28, let's see how this fight is going. Uh, Still not looking particularly good. I am able to get by the second Geodude, but I still only have a small amount of HP left over for the Nose Pass. And then it misses Rock Tomb, and I was like, oh no, is that going to be the path to victory? Is this thing just going to miss enough? But no, it knocks me out on the next turn. However, here's the thing. What if one of the Geodude misses its Rock-type move? Then I might be able to get through the initial portions of the fight with enough HP left over to knock the Nose Pass out. And then I also realized the fact that the Geodudes can use Defense Curl. The next fight plays out in the same way though, so that's another loss. And I'll just spoil the result of the next fight because it is going to be exactly the same. But I do want to take a moment here to just talk about how I was feeling while I was playing this because I was getting frustrated. It has almost been 45 minutes and I have not beat Roxanne. And Delibird is level 28. I'm sure that as soon as I get by her, the next portion of the game is going to be extremely easy. So I dug in here and I was just like, no, I am going to try this again. I am going to beat Roxanne at level 28. And then in the very next fight, Geodude misses its Rock Tomb. And I'm able to knock it out only taking damage from Struggle. Okay, that is perfect. It's time for the second Geodude. Unfortunately, this one hits its Rock Tomb and Delibird eats its Orenberry before I knock it out. Okay, but I have made it to the Nose Pass with about half health. Will this be enough? Well, if it isn't, I think I should just go and train again. I go for struggle, it does about a third, Nose Pass uses Rock Tomb, and it misses. Perfect. And then my next struggle gets a critical hit, knocking Nose Pass out. Alright, so I've done it. I am gonna celebrate. 
despite how lucky that was, we are moving on to the rest of the game. Now unless I give a present to the opponent's Pokemon, I am going to knock everything out in one hit now. I take out the Puchiena, free Pico, then I face Mei, after all I might as well face her, I'm just going to get free experience from these fights. And I think that I should continue training, just because uh, this Pokemon is not very good. And also, if you really think about it, Brawly is next. All of his fighting type moves are neutrally effective against me because of my typing. And then after that, we have Watson, who is an electric type specialist. And yeah, I am weak to his Pokemon as well. Then once we get by him, I have to face Flannery and I am once again weak to her fire types. Honestly, Norman is sort of going to be a breath of fresh air in this playthrough. On Duford Island, I pick up the Silk Scarf. This item gives a 10% boost to normal type moves. So yes, it can boost the power of present. I was actually really curious here because Struggle is categorized as a normal type move, despite dealing typeless damage. So I actually have a question for all of you now, which is, does the Silk Scarf boost the damage of Struggle? It is categorized as a normal type move, despite dealing typeless damage. I tried to research it, but I couldn't find an answer, so maybe one of you knows. But hopefully from this point, I won't have to use Struggle anymore anyways. Next, I deliver the letter to Steven. I get the TM for Steelwing, which obviously Delibird can't learn. And now it's time to see if I can defeat Brawly. His first Pokemon is Machop. I go for Present, and it does enough damage to take it out in one hit. All right, that's a good start. Next is Metatite. And I actually have a question here about Focus Punch. If Delibird hits it with Present, but Present causes it to heal, is the Metatite able to use Focus Punch? Well, in this case, we don't get a chance to see the result because I just knock it out with a single hit. Let me know in the comments, though. All that's left now is the Makuhita. I go for Present, it takes it down to red health, Makuhita strikes back with Vital Throw, but I'm so overleveled at this point, and it only does neutral damage, so I take very little. Makuhita heals with a Citrus Berry, and then I knock it out on the next turn. Alright, the second gym was nowhere near as tough as the first one. I almost forgot to catch myself a Magikarp, so I do that now. I name it Bruno, of course. After that, I head to Slateport Beach, and here I fight all the trainers. By the way, Delibird is level 29 now, and for Watson in the past, I have needed Pokemon to be between like 35 and 38. So I think that I'm going to need to train more before I defeat him. I'll just make a quick note here, inside of this place where the guy sells soda pops, if you defeat all the trainers and talk to him, he actually gives you some free ones, which is really nice. After that, I defeat the Team Aqua Grunts inside of the museum. And this is so important, because on the first floor, this one Aqua Grunt gets left behind, and if you talk to him, he will give you TM46, which is Thief. And yes, this is the first new move that Delibird can learn. Of course, in Generation 3, all Dark-type moves are special moves, so this is perfect because it's the first move that I can actually utilize Delibird's special attack stat with. However, you'll probably notice that uh, Delibird's attack stat's actually pretty good right now, and that's because Roxanne's badge boosted it by 10%. Well, I guess it's good that I can just use a move that does damage and doesn't have the chance to heal the opponent, so I'll take it for now. On the next route, I have to face Mei. She leads with a Wingull, Present knocks it out in one hit. Perfect. Combuskin's next. Uh, Present tries to heal it here, just doesn't do anything. Combuskin uses Focus Energy, making it easier to get critical hits. I try for Present again. Once again, tries to heal the chicken. Come on. It goes for Ember, luckily not getting a critical hit. And then my third Present finally knocks it out. Alright, I think I've done this. I finish off the Lombre in a single hit, and now I've made it to Mauville City. I finish Wally off, and then I train against all of the trainers in the surrounding areas. This brings Delibird up to level 36, and it actually positions it perfectly so that it can pick up the black glasses on Route 116. I'll direct your eyes now to the top left of the screen. Yes, we are over an hour of playtime already. If this was a Generation 1 game, I would probably be done by now. If this was a Generation 2 game, I would be approaching the League. And for most other Pokemon in Hoenn, I would be at least at Flannery. What I'm really hoping here with Delibird is that the first part of the game is much harder, and then once I get access to moves like Fly and Ice Beam, the things are going to get much easier from there. Well, with all the gym trainers defeated, let's take on Watson now. He leads with Voltorb. I go for Present. It doesn't do anything course. Spark does about a quarter to me, and then my next present knocks it out. Electric's next. I go for present. It takes it down. Perfect. And then Watson chooses to send Manectric in. 
Uh, why didn't he send in the Magneton? I'm so confused. I go for present, it obviously rolls the worst amount of damage, doing about a quarter to the enemy, and then it paralyzes me with Thunder Wave. My Cherry Berry heals it, and then I get an interesting idea. If I use Thief now, I will actually steal the Manectric Citrus Berry. I pull it off, get paralyzed in the process, and then the Manectric strikes back with Shockwave, which takes Daily Bird into the red. All right, this is not gonna go well. Luckily, the Citrus Berry allows me to heal, but still, Watson uses a Super Potion, and that's too much. Let's try that again. After all, Present can do better. It just refuses to, though, at the start of this fight, only doing half to Voltorb. I get hit by Shockwave, taking me down to, well, nice health. I knock Watson's lead out on the next turn. He sends in Electric. Once again, Present doesn't knock it out. Ah. Uh, uh, all right, fine. He sends in Manectric next. I go for present. It does more than half. Daily Bird gets paralyzed. Manectric eats its Citrus Berry. And because I'm playing on four times speed, I was going a little bit too fast. So I used Thief reactively here, but yeah, I'm not going to steal any items. And then just to spite me, present heals the Manectric. And yeah, it knocks Daily Bird out with Shockwave. Okay, please don't say I need to level up more for this fight. Let's try again. This time, present one shots the Voltorb. It doesn't on the Electric, and then it misses. I take a Shockwave to under half. So yeah, this is another loss. I was feeling a little bit stubborn at this point, so I tried again, but nope, it does not work out, and once again, Deli Bird faints. So with all the trainers in the surrounding region defeated, now I have to train against wild Pokemon, and that means my leveling up has really slowed down. Still, I'm not going to train for that long, because I'd like to reattempt this fight at level 38. After all, that is above the next damage rounding threshold. The problem is, even with a little bit more damage, present is still just extremely inconsistent, and I'm not able to make it by the Manectric. So I have not once gone up against Watson's Magneton. Let's just level up to level 40 and try again. As you can see, the time on the clock is really starting to stack up now, but maybe I'm gonna get by Watson now because I one-shot the Manectric, so I've made it to the Magneton. I go for present even though it's resisted, and it does almost half. Magneton strikes back with Shockwave, taking Deli Bird to orange, and then I use Thief because I didn't want to take the Magneton to red so that he would use a Super Potion. But in this case, that means that it just gets a chance to use Shockwave again, and it gets a critical hit, knocking Deli Bird out. So because I felt like I got pretty close in that fight, I continued to try again, and again, and again. Actually, uh, it continues to go. I try a total of seven more times against Watson, and all of them end in defeat. Okay, so the only option here is to continue to level up. During the training, I figured out that I forgot to face the wind straights, so I might as well take care of them now for a little bit more experience. After all, trainer Pokemon give more experience than wild Pokemon. After defeating them, Deli Bird's still only level 41, so I train in the wild for around 4 minutes, and that levels me up to level 43 over the next damage rounding threshold. Alright, let's try Watson again. I one-shot the Voltorb, one-shot the Electrike. Okay, this is going well. Next is Manectric. I go for Present. It takes it down to orange health. Deli Bird consumes its Cherry Berry. I go for present again, but it doesn't knock it out. Watson uses a Super Potion. I don't knock it out again. He uses another Super Potion. And then Watson chooses to switch it out and send in the Magneton. Okay, I am feeling good about this one. Let's do it. It goes for Sonic Boom, which is a strange first choice. Then my second present heals it. Ah, uh, you gotta be kidding me. It misses Supersonic, and from here, things actually go in my favor, and I do manage to take the Magneton down. But Watson still has his Manectric left, and while it has only a tiny bit of health left over, it comes out and just goes for Quick Attack, finishing Deli Bird off. I tried again, this time Magneton defeats me, and then in the next fight, I got so unlucky with Present that the Voltorb took me down to red health, and uh, yeah, then by the time the Manectric comes out, it just finishes me off. So I was being stubborn here, I kept trying, I lose a total of three more times before I finally decide to go and train up more to level 45. Coming into this challenge, I really thought that Roxanne was going to be the hardest of the first four gym leaders because I thought that the overleveling I would need to do there would make the other ones easier. But Watson is really proving me wrong. He is definitely the biggest challenge yet. While I was doing all of this training and fighting Watson over and over again, I kept trying to think what other options I might have available to me. But none of the other TMs or HMs that Daily Bird can learn are available yet. For instance, I have to have Watson's badge to use Rock Smash to get Hidden Power or Secret Power. And then all of the other ones are locked off even later in the game. Yes, Focus Punch is available on Route 115, but it requires Surf, so even that's not an option. As you've been seeing right now, even level 45 doesn't make this fight good. 
And at this point, I just decided that I was going to beat Watson at this level. Leveling up more does slightly improve my damage ranges, but the thing that I think I'm really facing here is just how inconsistent present is. In the cases that it rolls 80 or 120 damage, it is doing good work, so I just need to wait for the moment where all of the stars align and present does what it needs to do on every one of his Pokemon. I lost two more times, and now I should explain that I've realized that Thief is one hitting both the Voltorb and the Electrike, so that is making me more consistent here. I use Present against the Manectric, and it knocks it out in one hit, so I've arrived at the Magneton with full health and I still have my Cherry Berry. I go for Present, it does decent damage, a little bit more than a third, Magneton uses Thunder Wave, so I consume my Berry, I switch to Thief so I don't do too much damage to it, after all I do not want Watson to use a Super Potion, Magneton paralyzes me, moves first with Sonic Boom, alright there it goes again, and then I use Present which finally knocks it out. At 1 hour, 34 minutes, and 54 seconds with 28 resets, Delibird has finally defeated Watson and earned itself the third badge. This one gives me a 10% boost to my speed stat, but more importantly, I am going to have access to more parts of the map, and with them comes more TMs and HMs. First, I catch myself an HM friend in the form of Meryl, and then I get access to Secret Power. I teach it to Delibird right away, because this is going to be a much better normal type move to use than present. After that, I backtrack to Slateport City, and here I can visit the TM shop to buy Hidden Power. And for this run, I have chosen Hidden Power Electric. It gives Delibird an option against the plentiful water types in the region, and is also going to be very effective against Wallace at the end of the Elite Four. After all, I didn't think that defeating him with Ice Beam and Fly was going to be uh, the winning strategy for Delibird. I take a gondola ride, there's no hiker here today, and then I face Maxi. Another reason that Hidden Power Electric is really helpful is because it's a special move, so Delibird can utilize its high special attack stat now. I knock the Mighty Anna out in one hit, next is Camerupt, it's a ground type so I'm gonna have to use Secret Power here. It only takes two turns to knock it out and all that's left is Zubat, Hidden Power zaps it out of the skies, and with that I have made it to Flannery. Going into this fight, I was just hoping that all of my overleveling for Watson would allow me to get through here in a single attempt. Secret Power 1 hits the Nummel, so that's a good start. She sends in Camera up next. Secret Power does more than half. It goes for Tackle. Why did you use Tackle? <laughs> I knock it out on the next turn, Slugma comes in, I go for Hidden Power Electric against it because it will do more damage, I knock it out, and all that's left is the Torque Hole. I do more than half to it, and then it goes for Overheat, which knocks Delibird out in a single hit. Okay, guess what the winning strategy is here? Well, we can just wait for the Torque Hole to miss with Overheat, or it can just use Body Slam which is a very strange choice considering I'm an ice type. And then on the next turn, I knock it out with Hidden Power Electric, and I've earned myself the fourth badge. I backtrack through the middle of the map, obtaining strength on my way, and then I head to Norman's Gym. It's really starting to feel like things are speeding up, which is great because we're going to be reaching the two-hour mark very soon. I get through Norman's first three Pokemon with them doing about half damage to me before I reach the slacking. And here the game teaches me a lesson. I go for Hidden Power Electric, which gets a critical hit. Alright, I'm gonna knock it out of the next turn. Slacking uses Counter, and it actually works, knocking Delibird out in a single hit. So here's how Counter is supposed to work. It is supposed to deal damage back to the opponent when the user was hit by a physical move. However, it does also counter Hidden Power, regardless of its type. I honestly had no idea about that, so I thought I was safe. So I'm not safe using Hidden Power against the Slacking. Instead, I open with Thief. Then on the turn it's loafing around, I go for Hidden Power, taking it down to red. I try to go for the KO with Hidden Power, Norman heals it with a Hyper Potion, I do about a third. And because the item use replaces Slacking's turn, now I can just go for two follow-up Hidden Powers and knock it out. So Delibird has earned itself the 5th badge and a 10% boost to its defense stat. But the real prize from this fight is the fact that now I can use Surf. With it, I can visit the Abandoned Ship and pick up the TM for Ice Beam. This is Delibird's first same type attack bonus move, and it feels so good to have it now. Especially because the next major battle coming up is going to be Winona. Before I get to her, I have to defeat Mei, and uh, this fight is very easy. After that, I clear out the Kecleon, head into Winona's gym, defeat some easy trainers in here, and with that, I'm ready to take the Flying Master on. Of all of the battles in this playthrough, this one is going to be easy. 
Ice Beam one-shots the Swablu, Ice Beam one-shots the Skarmory, Ice Beam one-shots the Tropius, the Pelipper of course uses Protect, does not get one-shot, but then my follow-up Ice Beam one-shots it. Yeah, I probably should have used Hidden Power Electric there, but whatever. That leads to her Ace Altaria, but Ice Beam does four times damage to it, and with that, Delibird has taken an easy victory. All right, that feels so good. I defeat Team Aqua on Mount Pyre, then I teach Delibird Fly in the place of Thief. I don't think I'll use this move very much because of Delibird's attack stat, but it might have its place. After that, I catch myself a Zigzagoon. I did not do this earlier on. I need it so that I can use Cut to go into the Trickmaster's house and grab a rare candy. I also grab this rare candy south of Mount Pyre, and then I go to Fall Arbor Town and pick up the TM for return. Well, uh, I would have if I had remembered to pick up the Meteorite after defeating Maxi. What's a little backtracking now anyways? After all, this playthrough is taking quite a while. But all the major trainers that come up next are no issue for Delibird, mostly because it's overleveled. I defeat Maxi, then I defeat Matt. Um, nice bandana, Matt. And with all of that out of the way, I have now reached the toughest gym leaders in the game. It's time to take on Tate and Liza. I have a hope in this fight. Ice Beam is going to do enough against their Pokemon that I'm going to be able to make it through. I go for it against Zatu so that it doesn't set up, and I take it out in one hit. That's also because I know the Clay Doll is going to use Earthquake on the first turn. It is basically hard-coded to do this. So that takes out my Magikarp, but no issues there. I go for Ice Beam against the Soul Rock next. I know it is not super effective, but I really wanted to take it down so that it doesn't use Flamethrower. It doesn't quite take it out. Clay Doll uses Ancient Power doing half to Delibird, and Soul Rock sets up Sunny Day. Okay, I need to take it out on the next turn. I do with Ice Beam. Claydol goes for Ancient Power again, which just barely doesn't finish Delibird off, but now it's going to be a loss because I don't have enough health to knock out their final two Pokemon. I tried again, this time prioritizing knocking the Claydol out first. After all, the Zatu loves to set up with Calm Mind and also target Magikarp. So, yeah. By the way, yes, Magikarp is helping in this case, but there is actually no way to get into this battle if you don't have two Pokemon on your team. So this is the best I can do. Next, I go for Ice Beam against the Zatu, knocking it out, and then the Soul Rock sets up Sunny Day. Okay, I was hoping for a better damage roll here, and maybe I could one-shot it in that case, but I can't. I get hit by Flamethrower. Funnily enough, Delibird survives. It eats its Citrus Berry. I go for Ice Beam, knocking the Soul Rock out, and now all that's left is the Lunatone. But it's set up with Calm Mind, it goes for Psychic, and that knocks me out. I tried targeting the Soul Rock before the Zatu, which actually lets me take it out, avoiding a lot of damage, but Zatu is getting very set up, and now Ice Beam is going to do less damage against it. So I prioritize knocking out the Lunatone with Ice Beam, but my second one just barely doesn't get the knockout, and then they set up Light Screen. Ugh. Also, they use a Hyper Potion, but Delibird gets a critical hit. Okay, perfect. However, Zatu goes for Psychic and it's so set up that it knocks me out. So I think I should head out to sea and do a bit more training. This takes Delibird up to level 60, which might be enough to defeat Tate and Liza. I'm hoping that being over this damage rounding threshold gives me the one hit on the Soul Rock. But unfortunately, it does not, so that's another loss. I tried again because I was hoping that this would be a damage roll, and apparently it is, because this time I knocked the Soul Rock out. Okay, that's perfect. I go for Ice Beam on the Lunatone, taking it out over two turns, but Zatu is getting really set up now. And because of it, Ice Beam is probably not going to take it out, unless I get a critical hit. And with that, Delibird has done it, and earned itself the seventh gym badge which finally gives it a boost to its special attack and special defense. Finally, we're able to see the discrepancy between these two stats. After all, Delibird's attack stat has been boosted by Roxanne's badge this entire time. At this point, I just want to reflect on the fact that most of these battles against the tough opponents have required luck. Is that going to be how all of this ends? Requiring luck against Steven Stone? Well, we're not going to find out just yet, because for now he's my ally as we defeat the Team Magma members in the Space Center. Next in the storyline, I need to defeat Archie. Ice Beam one-shots the Mightyena, Ice Beam one-shots the Crobat, and Hidden Power Electric one shots the Sharpedo. That was a really easy fight. Rayquaza comes in, saves the day, and now it's time to face Juan. For Delibird, his team is pretty easy. Hidden Power just one shots the Love Disc. I make a mistake accidentally using it on the next Whisk Cash. It takes a while to knock this thing out. I do freeze it, so that's nice. After that, the Celio and the Crawdont are both one hits, leading to the Kingdra. I really should have used Ice Beam here, but Hidden Power gets the job done over three turns anyways. So before the league, there's only one more trainer that I need to defeat. It's Wally. And luckily for Delibird, his Magneton is not nearly as scary as Watson's, so I make it through his team, and now it's time to take on the Elite Four. Let's do this. 
because Delibird's moveset is so small, I think this is kind of its final form. Ice Beam, Hidden Power, Return, and Fly. Luckily for me, against Sydney, Ice Beam is perfect. It actually one-shots all of his team members except the Crawdont. It survives doing just under half and then I knock it out. So let's move on to Phoebe. Against her first Dusclops, things are really annoying. It uses Protect, which means pressure drains a lot of my PP. Then she uses a full restore on it. I hit myself in confusion, not once, but twice. And as a result, I'm going into the rest of the fight with only orange HP left over. Ice Beam does one hit the next Bayonet, but now it's time to defeat her Ace Dusclops. And here I learned something that I didn't know. It has Rock Slide, which obviously does enough to KO. Here's the thing about that fight though. I just lost because I got really unlucky with Confusion. I think I should be able to make it to the second Dusclops with better health if I just don't hit myself in Confusion. In the next fight, it doesn't happen. I make it to the Dusclops, use Ice Beam, and get a lucky critical hit. Perfect. The next Bayonet on her team causes some issues because of a full restore, but still I'm able to make it to the Sableye, attack with Ice Beam, get a critical hit, and knock it out. So it's time for Glacia, and Hidden Power Electric is also helpful here because most of her Pokemon are part water types. That isn't the case for the Glalie though, and I have to use a physical move here because ice types resist other ice moves. I go for Fly, it does less than half, I try Hidden Power Electric because maybe it'll do more damage. It doesn't, but I still knock the Glalie out over the next two turns. I take care of the following Celio over two turns, and now it's time for her last Glalie. It goes for Ice Beam, doing actually quite a bit, and instead of using Hidden Power again, I go for Fly, which doesn't get the KO, and she finishes Delibird off with Ice Beam. Okay, so I attempted that fight at level 67. What if I use one more rare candy just to get a little bit more damage? I was hoping that maybe I could get a two hit against the Glalie using Return, but... No, that's not gonna work. Maybe Fly will give me the two hit, after all it has slightly more effective power than Return. And in this case, it uh, just barely won't. The Glalie survives with a sliver and knocks Delibird out. I tried one more time, hoping that that would be just a rare, unfavorable roll, but it doesn't look like it is because the Glalie survives again, and Delibird goes down for the third time. Okay, so the only choice is to use two more rare candies, go up to level 70, and try again. This really should give me the damage ranges I need, and it does on both of the Glalie, so for the first time I have made it to the wall rain. I go for Hidden Power Electric, it does more than half, that's perfect, and it knocks me out with Surf. Still, I have what I need to make it back to the wall rain in pretty much every fight. So maybe I can survive one of its hits? Well, not an Ice Beam if I have orange health left over. Also, sometimes I do lose at, like, say, the second Celio because it uses Blizzard. Just great. And after the second time it does this, I was like, yeah, okay, I should probably level up more, so let's go to level 73 and try again. Still at this level, Hidden Power Electric is not one-shotting her lead. It's really nice that this thing likes to use Hail, because then at least I can get by it without losing any health. I make it through the rest of her team and arrive at the Wall Rain with green health. Okay, this is perfect. Hopefully I can survive a hit. Fly is just under half. Wall Rain strikes back with Ice Beam. Delibird survives. I use Hidden Power Electric, and yeah, it survives. It knocks Delibird out with Surf, so I really should have gone for two Hidden Power Electrics there. When I do, I am finally able to take it out, and now I'm moving on to Drake. So he's going to be easy, which is good because this playthrough has not been. We are approaching the three hour mark, and I have 44 resets. At least I'm able to defeat him without adding to them. So I've done it, I've arrived at Wallace, the champion of the Hoenn region, and my second to last trainer. Going into the first fight, I brought a Citrus Berry with me, because I was thinking that Hidden Power Electric would be enough for most of his team. Here's the problem though, Delibird just isn't very good, also Tentacruel has an incredible special defense stat, and in Generation 3 you take poison damage even when you knock out the opponent's Pokémon. So as a result, when I get to the Whiskash, my status condition finishes me off. There's an easy fix to that though, obviously just bring the Pecha Berry into the fight. I even get lucky here in this fight by freezing the Whisker Fish. Gyarados is next, I go for Hidden Power Electric of course for 4 times damage, knocking it out in a single hit, and now all that's left in Delibird's way is the Milotic. I go for Hidden Power Electric and it doesn't even do half. Surf hits, and that's it. I make it back to the Milotic, and it just looks like this is the state of things. I'm not able to do half, and it's going to finish me off on the first turn it attacks. So although I would really like to save my rare candies for Steven, I'm going to need to use them now to take Delibird all the way up to level 78. Hopefully this will give me the two hit. Because I'm at a higher level, I make it back to the Milotic with even more health. So let's see how much hidden power can do now. And unfortunately, 
Still not half. My Lodic uses Surf, gets a critical hit, and that's it. Now, I did a little bit of research into my Lodic, and I realized that it has lower physical defense than it has special defense. Like, significantly so, it has base 79 defense and base 125 special defense. So let's try to use Fly against it. And in this case, I get a critical hit, which just barely does not knock it out. As a result, Wallace uses a full restore, I go for Hidden Power Electric, and then I use Fly, hoping that this way I can bypass his use of another healing item. But Fly does uninspiring damage because of my lowered attack stat, and my Lodic knocks Daily Bird out. I lost a few more times, then I tried using the Silk Scarf to boost the damage of Return, hoping that this would give me a two hit, but it doesn't. I wondered if Facade and maybe being poisoned from the Tentacruel would allow me to win, but no. Like we saw before, I cannot make it to the Milotic if I'm poisoned. So I thought about a less consistent strategy of maybe using Secret Power to paralyze the Milotic, but it does have Miracle Scale, so this will boost its defense. Unfortunately, I just get knocked out by the Whiskash in this fight, so I don't even get to test it out. And at this point, things were going so badly that I decided to throw in the towel, black out, and head into Victory Road to train more. Normally I resist doing this as much as possible, because I've changed my moveset throughout the league and saved over it. That means if I decide to train more, then I won't have access to the moves that I had at the very beginning of the league when I re-attempt. However, in this case, Delibird's limited move pool is actually an advantage, because when I black out, I'll have the exact same moves for the league again. I am really trying to find a silver lining in here. For my training, I target level 81, because then the experience from the trainers in the league will get me to level 83 before I face Wallace again. I didn't think that just one damage rounding threshold would be enough to two-shot the Milotic, so hopefully two are. If not, though, I can always just repeat this again. So I make it back to Wallace, and now let's see how this goes. It looks like I have the chance to knock the Whale Lord out. I don't get it on the first turn, but I get it on the second turn after Wallace heals. Then against the Tentacruel, I use Fly, getting hit by Hydro Pump, and knock it out with Return. Next is Ludicolo. Fly takes it out in a single hit. Whiskash goes down to two Ice Beams. He did heal, and then I got a critical hit on the second turn, so that's lucky. I finish the Gyarados off with Hidden Power Electric, and now it's time to see the damage ranges against the Milotic. I use my Electric move and it looks like it does half. However, because of my higher level, it looks like my Lodic doesn't want to attack. It goes for Toxic, poisoning me. However, I have a Petcha Berry, so I heal. From here, the Milotic tries to stall me out with Recover, but eventually I realize that I am going to do this. It stops using a Recover, and as a result, I finally take it down. Delibird clocks in after the League with a time of 3 hours, 24 minutes, and 13 seconds, with 61 resets at level 84. This took 10 hours and 38 minutes of game time. Okay, so I've made it to Steven. Delibird is level 85. Let's see how this goes. He leads with Skarmory. Now while Ice Beam isn't super effective, it does at least have the highest effective power, and I think that this should be able to get it done. After all, Skarmory doesn't have great special defense, but no, it is definitely not going to get it done. Skarmory survives on orange health, strikes back with Steel Wing, and does more than half to Deli Bird. All right, so uh, I am not feeling good about this. <laughs> I knock it out on the next turn, move on to the Clay Doll, use Ice Beam, and it doesn't go down. It survives in the red, but the high red. It strikes back with ancient power and that's it. I level up to level 90 and attempt again. Honestly, this was more of just a uh, test because I did not think I was going to get much more damage and yeah, I really don't. It looks like it did exactly the same amount to Skarmory. At least it only used Toxic, so I'm moving on to the Clay Doll with full health. I go for Ice Beam and this time I knock it out. So that's really good. Cradilly's next. This thing has huge special defenses, but it is weak to Ice Beam. But I just barely don't knock it out. It strikes back with Ancient Power, and without a crit, from full health, it knocks Deli Bird out. Things started to feel hopeless when in the very next fight, I get a bad roll against the Clay Doll and it survives. So that means I can't even make it to the Cradily consistently and roll for a critical hit. However, that's exactly what I get in this fight, so I do knock it out. I move on to the Armaldo and like, what am I even going to do against this thing? It's a rock steel type after all. Ice Beam does more than half, but that isn't enough because it has ancient power. So once again, it is time to train. <laughs> this run is going to be four hours. I do not think that I'm going to beat Steven in the next 12 and a half minutes. I come back at level 93, get a freeze on the Skarmory, 
perfect. Then I go for Ice Beam against the Clay Doll and it does knock it out. Okay, I'm feeling hopeful here. I go for Ice Beam against the Cradley, it knocks it out. All right, so that's a fairly consistent knockout on his first three Pokemon. I know the Skarmory normally will survive, but now we have to contend with the Armaldo. I hit it with Ice Beam, it takes it to orange health, and then Ancient Power knocks Delibird out without a critical hit. So a four times weakness to rock moves is very problematic for a Pokemon when they have to defeat Steven. I tried again, creatively survives, so that's bad, but what's another reset? And in this fight, he sends out Metagross earlier on, which is weird, and I freeze it, so that's perfect. I knock the Claydol out in one hit, I get the lucky roll against the Cradley, and make it back to the Armaldo. This is like the best luck, I am so happy, please just freeze the Armaldo. But I don't, and it takes me out with Ancient Power. So that is my 69th reset, and uh, this playthrough is not nice. So I trained up to level 95, I have one rare candy left over, so I use it to take me up to level 96 for this fight. Kind of nice numerology with 69 resets and level 96. I'm gonna knock the Skarmory out in two hits, and it appears now that I have consistent one hits on the Claydol and the Cradley, but I'm still only taking the Armaldo to orange health. One potential avenue to victory is either getting a critical hit or freezing it. I tried to do this over the next few fights, but eventually it just became apparent that I should really train up to level 100. So I head back to the league to train up to the maximum possible level. I also spent time grabbing the Nevermelt Ice, so I'm hoping that this is going to boost Ice Beam's damage enough to hopefully one-hit the Skarmory. No, it, it doesn't get the one-hit, are you kidding me? It retaliates with Toxic, and now I have no way to heal that, so yep, that's a reset. Well, let's see what the damage range is against the Armaldo. And uh, I can take it to red now, but I still can't knock it out. But maybe, just maybe, I will survive Ancient Power. Of course I won't. <laughs> However, there is one way to boost my damage here. I head to the game corner and pick up an extra TM for Ice Beam, just in case this strategy doesn't work. And then I head to the Lily Cove department store, where I buy the TM for Blizzard. Now in Generation 1, Blizzard has 90% accuracy, but in Generation 3, it has 70% accuracy. So this is really not the most consistent move. When I get back to the cave, I realize like, why would I unlearn Ice Beam for Blizzard? Let's unlearn Return instead. Now with this powerful Ice type move, I can one-shot the Skarmory, and that means I no longer need the Petra Berry for the fight, so I can keep the Nevermelt Ice. Then I can knock out both the Claydol and the Cradley with Ice Beam for more consistency and move on to the Armaldo. Okay, Blizzard, please do this. And it does. Steven sends in Metagross next. I'm not going to one-hit it, so I go for Ice Beam first turn. It misses a Meteor Mash, which is very lucky. I go for another Ice Beam, and then it hits Meteor Mash and one-shots Delibird. And then it happens again. I do survive the next hit with two hit points, but I can't knock the Metagross out fast enough, so it takes me out anyways. And sometimes I also just miss Blizzard, so Armaldo knocks me out with Ancient Power. And making matters worse is the fact that Blizzard does not always one-shot this thing. Loss after loss stack up, and with that, I have 100 resets. I was really hoping that eventually I would freeze the Metagross and be able to win, but it just isn't panning out. And then after my 103rd reset, I realized what the solution is. And I have never gotten here in the entire two and a half years that I've been doing these challenge runs. This is a point where I'm going to have to use double team to win. So when I first implemented the rule, I didn't just outright ban evasion strategies because I figured that double team could be used as a measure of last resort in the most hopeless of circumstances. And this is one of those. So I buy the TM from the game corner and then I head back to face Steven. So here's what this is gonna take. I can one-shot the Skarmory and then Steven sends out Claydol. And since this is his weakest offensive Pokemon, I can set up here by alternating between double team and protect. It's better to do this than just spamming double team because the Claydol only has five PP of ancient power. So very soon I'll deplete it. And after that's done, it actually can't do damage to me because it's only other damage dealing move is earthquake. Still though, this isn't entirely consistent because I do continue to faint. I get fully set up after my 115th reset, and then I knock the Claydol out, knock the following Cradley out, and Blizzard fails to one-hit the Armaldo, and it gets an Ancient Power through my setup, and Delibird goes down. So even with Double Team, this is still very inconsistent, but eventually I'm going to get it. The question is, will I have the most resets that I've ever had on the channel? Will this little Santa bird have more resets than Arcanine had in its very first playthrough? Well, 
The answer is no, because in the very next fight, with 117 resets, Delibird finally manages to get to the Agron. This is the first time that I have been here. I go for Ice Beam for consistency, it does half, Agron misses its thunder, and I finish it on the next turn. Delibird clocks in with a time of 4 hours 41 minutes and 59 seconds, with 117 resets at level 100. This took 13 hours and 53 minutes of game time. So where does Delibird fit in my Emerald leaderboard? Well, it fits uh, right near the bottom. However, it was slightly faster than Butterfree, but I think if I played Butterfree again today, I would be able to outpace Delibird. After all, that was my first playthrough of Pokemon Emerald on this channel, and my first one in like 10 years. So that's it for Pokemon Emerald on the channel for this year, but it is not my last Generation 3 video of the year. So stay tuned tomorrow for the last installment of my daily content. I hope you've enjoyed it. Happy Holidays, everyone.